the relief that I found in this training was that I did not need to try to understand everything about the training intellectually. You know, I was given a tool to actually instinctively recognize open intelligence, instinctively recognize ease and potency at the basis of all my experience. I no longer needed to analyze everything to death in order to understand it. And for me, that was like letting a heavy load fall to the ground. When I heard the phrase, short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, go continuous, there was instant relief. I, I, I recognized what I was looking for. I was looking for open intelligence. Or I heard the phrase, short moments of allowing everything to be as it is, just as it is, and in short moments let everything be as it is. That's when this heavy load just was lifted. So we can start with what is, the, what is open intelligence? What are short moments of open intelligence? Just now, very directly, we can be introduced to open intelligence. We need to know what open intelligence is before we know what to rely on, right? So an easy way to identify open intelligence, you know what I'm going to say, <laughs> stop thinking for a moment just to identify open intelligence. So right now you stop thinking or just pause the train of thoughts. What remains? A sense of alertness, your power to know. This is open intelligence. Open intelligence is inseparable from all intelligence as it is. Open intelligence, your open intelligence, is indivisible from nature's intelligence. So when you stop thinking for a moment, what's looking? You know, you don't need to complicate it. You do not need to complicate it. Open intelligence is what's looking. We've just learned and assumed that our intelligence is somehow separate from this vast intelligence of the universe or of nature, whatever you want to call it. We've just learned that, and that's what we've been emphasizing. I'm a self-generated human being in this world of subjects and objects, and I need to learn how to get along and be successful and have a good life and you know, have, do no harm and all these kind of moralistic codes and ideas. And living from that perspective is so limiting. It's very, it, it just doesn't... It doesn't define us at all. It's not accurate at all. It's so far off mark that it's, it's kind of bizarre that we thought that way. But now we're being introduced, reintroduced to our true identity, open intelligence. So we train up in getting accustomed to our open intelligence, our, our vast indestructible <coughs> identity. We need to train up. You can recognize it in short moments, but train up and, and gain confidence in open intelligence rather than on descriptions of our experience. So in Balanced View, we call all the descriptions of our experience, anything we know or maybe we don't know, any thought, emotion, sensation, any person, place, or thing, we call that data. No need to categorize it into all these different complex systems. Simply call it data. It really allows for a profound understanding of reality as it is. Open intelligence, which we identified when we stopped thinking, is inseparable from data. Inseparable like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. Or like the images in a crystal ball are inseparable from the crystal ball itself. All data, positive, negative, and neutral, they do not have an independent nature of their own. They're not self-generated. They're generated in, of, as, and through open intelligence, this basic space of open intelligence. So when you're relying on the instruction of short moments of allowing everything to be as it is, what that essentially means is we're not emphasizing all the data labels. You can see the downside in emphasizing all the labels. You see how much time and energy goes into labeling everything and trying to find meaning from the data. 
you know, thoughts come up and we put a lot of energy into trying to micromanage them, trying to have positive thinking <clears throat> and trying to get rid of the negative thinking. I mean, when, when you look at your thinking, it, it's so random a lot of the time. It's just like being in a dream almost if you really look at your thought patterns. You know, anything can come into your mind at any given moment. You could be in the middle of a, an important business meeting and you might have a totally inappropriate thought. You know, you look across the room and you see someone and you're just full of desire and attraction and you're in this business deal that's worth billions of dollars and then you just get lost in that whole train of thought. I mean, I'm just giving kind of a random example, but you know, you, you see how random the, the thinking is. It just, it's all over the place. So if we were to invest all of our time and energy in trying to manage that, like you'd be saying, you can't have this thought, you can't have this thought, you'll blow the deal, you'll blow the deal. You know, it, you're not going to be relaxed and open and, and hearing the solutions of everyone in that meeting, for one. You know, you'll just be, oh my God, I cannot think this. How could I think this? Then you might start going, oh, it's because of my childhood. I was, I didn't have good role modeling and it's my employees. They're not dressing <coughs> properly. I don't know. You could just go off into a whole tangent. So that's that uses up all the, that beneficial energy. It really does. So let thoughts be as they are, just like letting the breeze in this space be as it is. I use that metaphor a lot, just because you're not trying to ma micromanage the air that you're sitting in. Allow your thought patterns to do what they do. They don't define our action. We have a choice. If we're having a thought like that, it's not like, Oh, we better take a five-minute break and grab that person and run into the broom closet. <laughs> you know, that would be acting out on that data stream. Uh, replacing it would be, you know, all those, I can't have this thought. And then avoiding it would be like, oh, I need to leave the room. I, I have something, an emergency has come up. So that's, a, that's avoiding, <laughs> that's avoiding the, the situation. When you let it be as it is, you can just be sitting very calmly in that meeting and know exactly what's needed and focus on the, the solution. <coughs> you could say, so what? I'm attracted to that person. Wow, that's an intense rush of energy. And I'm going to use it to be a benefit. I mean, really. I mean, when we're working on teams here at the center, you could have all kinds of thoughts. You know, you might be, you know, just some blame comes up, criticism might come up. If we were to focus in on all that data, we wouldn't be able to build the center. We could not run the center. We wouldn't be able to be here every day for four months, day in and day out, and working together. It just wouldn't work. There would be so many breakdowns. People would be in arguments, and people would run away, and they'd be full of resent, and hatred, and jealousy, and, and focusing on that resentment, the jealousy, the hatred. Here, all that stuff can still come up. There's nothing wrong with it coming up. The point is, is to not make ourselves wrong for having these, these thoughts, these emotions, these sensations. Just let it be as it is and emphasize this vast, indestructible open intelligence. And you will start to find there's more and more harmony regardless of what you think about the other person or what they say to you. You start to feel that you're unflinching. When we talk about indestructible pride, it just means Wow, we, we are all open intelligence. We all possess this immense power to be of benefit to ourselves, to the entire species, to this planet, to this universe, and we're just gaining access to that knowledge. This hasn't been demonstrated in the past on a wide, on a global scale, maybe an infinite scale. So we're gaining access to this beneficial knowledge and we're training up together. So it's natural that, you know, when somebody speaks disrespectfully to us. Again, we have all the data streams, you know. How could they say that to me? Don't they know how much time and energy I s spend and, you know, all the things that come up? More and more you, you skillfully find a way to actually empower them as well. You know, you demonstrate respectful relating in your everyday life. You know, when I, when I work with the Balancey teams, I just see there's, there's an inherent respectful relating that is just opening up. We've lived so long from a space of disrespectful relating that 
it just takes some time to get used to a new way of relating, but it's a natural way of relating. We're not forcing ourselves into this new way of relating. When we let everything be as it is, you start to see the natural, inherent, beneficial qualities in you, as you, of you. Your data are not indications of anything wrong, as much as you might think they might be. But it takes some time to really let them be as they are. We, you know, we're so used to getting in there and rearranging and replacing and indulging. So it's really quite a practice to let everything be as it is. I can tell you, it's not like anything I ever did before. I had many strategies to indulge, avoid, or replace in order to be, in order to have a, a really good life, to really feel that I can contribute my gifts, strengths, and talents. So I thought that it took a lot of you know, replacing, basically. I would have negative thoughts and emotions. I felt I needed to replace them. So just to let them be as they were, I mean, it, it's definitely not comfortable at times. So personally, I'm so thankful that I had the support that was offered here, and I took up the support. The support we offer is the four mainstays, and one is the short moments of open intelligence repeated many times until it goes continuous. It already is continuous. It's a vast expanse. When you tap into it again and again, you see that it already is on all the time, and you have access to it whenever you just naturally remember. That's brilliant. Effortless practice. Boom, there it is in the midst of whatever's going on. So that's the emphasize open intelligence. Then we have the training media. So I took advantage of all the training media. I wanted to read text that gave me direct instruction rather than some vague statement about what might occur in 10,000 years or 10,000 lifetimes. I wanted the direct instruction that would cut through the root of my misperception. So I read as many texts as I could. I participated in trainings all over the world. I went to the center in Sweden. I came here to India to participate in the most important choice that I wanted to make. Training up in my fundamental reality rather than my altered reality. And that's a choice you can all make. You know, you can use the, the training media as much as you like, or as little if you don't want to, but I would, it's, it's so empowering. And then the trainer, you know, just to know that there's somebody there that has gone before me, has tested out all the instructions, knows any of the pitfalls along the way, who can offer so much empowering advice, is, and then there's a transparent relationship. You know, I always wanted a relationship that would be absolutely transparent, nothing left out. I mean, you probably know, you wish you all had something like that. You wish you had someone to really confide in, someone who would only empower you. But, you know, I didn't feel like there was anyone on this planet that I could do that with, with every single thing that I thought, felt, and sensed. And to know that there is a person that is there for me for that reason, that allowed me to outshine so many data, so many ideas, misbeliefs, misperceptions about myself that I thought I was somehow flawed in this area, not good enough in that area, arrogant in this area, you know, all these things I had been just stuffing away thinking, you know, I don't want anyone to know about this, otherwise, they, you know, I won't have friends, I won't have a partner, I won't have a career. You know, this fear of what people would think if they knew my data streams. You know, that's what living in fear is. It's just like you, you want to stuff everything away so nobody can see, and then it, it just pops out at the inappropriate moment. And then, wow, everybody does know everything about me anyway. <laughs> and so that's been the fourth mainstay of the community. I mean, it, the community is where we get to test it out together and really grow together. Where we do get to share our principal data streams in a safe and empowering space. Not playing out the data streams we have and uh, clarifying their meaning together. You know, in the training settings, it, we have the confidential space where we're allowed to 
ask our questions openly without fear that somebody in the group will comment on it or laugh at us or say, you're an idiot or, wow, I really love you or, you know, all these comments that usually go on in group discussions. Here we sit and we empower each other. You know, we say, wow, I used to have this data stream about myself. I was so flawed. I felt so anxious. I felt so awkward. And they would say, really? I look at you. You don't look that way. You, you know, these kind of things that we just share together. And you see, wow, everybody has the exact same kinds of issues or fears or wishes or hopes or fantasies. or And really what we see, we all just want for this entire planet to live and benefit. We don't want the planet to self-destruct. We don't want our species to self-destruct, really. I mean, what we really want is to find beneficial, potent solutions that are... Yeah, and these solutions are just... They're here. They're in open intelligence. They're not somewhere else. We find the solutions. That's another part of the community. We come up with so many solutions together. We don't sit around and talk about the problems. If we identify a problem, the group wisdom says, you know, what, what can we do now? Let's rely on open intelligence rather than emphasize all the data around this situation. And what is the solution? How can I empower myself? How can I empower the team? How can I empower those not in the community? So my, all my time and energy is just like, wow, it's all into solutions and really enjoying life now. Enjoying the flow, not trying to micromanage things like feeling sick. And you're feeling sick in India and just to relax is, is so, what a relief. It feels like everything is cured in, in that moment. You know, your stomach is rumbling, you have a headache. Just take short moments and, and rest with that. I mean, I'd just share quickly then with, I used to have so much tension and so much fear about my health that I was never going to get healthy. All that tension is, I just feel it day by day, releasing, releasing, releasing. You know, all those strategies I've used before to be, try to become healthy, I find they're not necessary at all now. If I need to take some kind of medicine, I do. There's so many solutions to be found. You know, just resting naturally is, wow, test it out when you don't feel well. Rather than try to f micromanage everything, just rest deeply. Rest as open intelligence. Let everything be as it is. Test it in your own experience. Do you start to feel more ease and more relaxation? You know, that's just the first part, some ease and some relaxation. And then infinite benefit opening up.